If you lived back in the 80s or 90s, chances are you probably played a game at some point, either religiously or just casually at someone's house. Sometimes though, it's really hard to find that old game that you used to play either on eBay with incredibly high prices, or that second hand shop you see in those incredibly high prices. But it's thanks to emulation that we're able to play some of those old games from our youth. So you found the game and you're able to run it on your computer, but what if you don't want to be hunched over all the time, and rather be in your favorite couch in the living room, laid back and able to play with just a controller? not worrying about using a keyboard to exit out of anything at all. Well, that's what we're gonna do today, as we're gonna take one of these old computers and turn it into a kick-ass gaming system. Oh, <laughs> there's still some dust in here from when I bought it. I did not notice that. The first thing we'll need is a computer of our choice. You can obviously build your own computer to set up our software, but since we are going to go as simple and cheap as possible, I picked up an old workstation on eBay with these specs. My goal for this project is to be able to run up to the PlayStation, so it won't be that expensive if you're shopping around for a PC workstation, that's the same as mine. A keyboard for booting up into our USB drive and any problems we could run into an ethernet cable so we can connect to the internet, but if you opt to later, a wireless adapter to make things simpler afterwards, a USB drive for our operating system that we'll be installing onto our computer. Also another option is a USB drive for our ROM storage if you choose. Our game controller, in this case I have a wireless 360 controller with an adapter, and of course our PC cables. Since this is an old computer, I have a VGA cable, an audio cable for sound. Usually though, with newer HDTVs, these ports exist. So I would check in the back of your TV just in case. So just a reminder again, it should be noted that if you're using a custom built PC, your list may differ from mine. But like other projects I do, you can be flexible with some things. So let's download our operating system that we're going to use. Laka is based on an emulator project known as RetroArch and is known for performing very well as a multi-system emulator, which means it can play multiple consoles all in one package. So on the main homepage, click on Get Laka, and again, select the operating system that you are currently using, then select PC. Since we are using an old PC, I opted to download the 32-bit version. It'll take a couple of minutes, but once that's done, unzip it. Next, we'll plug in our USB drive and format it. We'll also need to download and install another program called Etcher, a fantastic writing program for SD cards and USB drives. There's a link to it in the description below. Open it, select the IMG file that we downloaded, then select the drive that we just formatted. Then write. It should take a couple minutes, but once it's done, eject the drive. Now for this part, it's optional. If you're planning on loading any games off a USB drive, and set up a ROM directory in the drive to keep your ROMs organized, like so on the screen. But once you moved your ROMs, unplug it. Now it's time to hook up our computer. In this step, we don't have to plug anything in order, just hook everything up that we have, USB drives and the ethernet cable for internet access. When you boot up your computer, make sure you hit the proper key to get to the boot menu. It'll vary depending on the system you have. Then select the USB drive. The menu should appear. Select Run Installer. Another menu should pop up, but here select Quick Install of Laka. Hit Yes on all the prompts and it should install rather quickly. Once that's done, select Reboot and unplug the USB drive that we have our operating system on. Wait a couple minutes, but it should boot up into the main menu. If you have your game controller already connected, Laka should be able to recognize it so you can be able to use it from the get-go. There's a link below to the Laka wiki for all things controller binding related if you need them. Now it's time to load our ROMs and our system files. For our ROMs, there are a bunch of ways you can load them, but for the simplest way, we are going to focus on two. If you're using an external drive, plug it in and reboot Laka. 
Afterwards, go to Add Content and select your drive and folders with your ROMs. Then select Scan This Directory. Waka should then find them and put them into their proper folders on the main menu. Another way you can do it is network support, meaning that you can add your ROMs to Laka from another computer attached to your network. To do this, we'll go back to our computer, and under Network, Laka should appear as a network location. Click on it, and there will be a bunch of folders. Under ROMs, make folders according to what you want to add to Laka. So in this case, I'll add one of each to show you how which one fares. Another thing to keep in mind that some consoles require BIOS in order to boot. The most popular of these is the PlayStation. So in order for you to run your PlayStation games, look for these specific files around the net. I'll also put a link in the description below in case you want to find them for all the systems Laka supports. But once you've found them, we are going to copy them into the system folder. Now back to Laka. Reboot it, then just like for the USB drive method, we are going to scan the directory for all the folders. Then the game should appear. So let's test them out, shall we? Marvel vs. Capcom runs smoothly, as well as Pokemon Stadium. Remember also that you can change the key bindings in the controller settings, as well as some hot buttons in case you want to leave your game and play something else as well. Now we're going to look at some of the odds and ends. If you want to be able to use Wi-Fi, under the settings menu, select Wi-Fi and the network name that you're using. Enter the password and you should be able to connect without using an Ethernet cable. The next thing is customization. In this case, we can change our icons, wallpapers, and game thumbnails. For our themes, you can find them under the menu settings where you can change the look of the icons when looking through your games. For game thumbnails, we are going to download the packs available through the menu. Under settings, go to online updater and thumbnails updater. Select the consoles that you have and you should start downloading. And now our wallpaper, which is accessed through an advanced setting from the menu option here. Once that's done, enable the dynamic wallpaper option. From there, go to directory and select which location your wallpapers are. Note, they'll have to be PNG files for Laka to recognize them. But if you want to select one now, Laka has some defaults. Through that option, navigate to the TMP folder, then assets, then wallpapers. Select a theme, then image resolution. Select Use This Directory, then go all the way out and save your current configuration. Quit or reboot and the wallpaper should open, depending on what menu you're in when selecting your games. Hopefully through this tutorial, this will act as a beginner's guide to what you can do with that old computer you have lying around, but at least you can make use of it to live out your childhood once again. Thanks for watching! If you want more emulation tutorials, check out these links here. Leave a comment below suggesting what I should do next. I really want to improve the show, and hopefully you guys can help out. If you want to help out more, check out my Patreon as well. Bye!